Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on your YouTube channel. This is your platform to take your English to the next level and sound like native speakers. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing 10 English words that if you know, your English sounds amazing and perfect and wonderful. So do you really know these words? I'm not sure whether you really know them, which is why we got to discuss them together. We got to review them one by one together to see if you really know them. And if you do, that means your English is wonderful or amazing. Are you ready? Of course you are, which is why you're here. So let's go and start reviewing the words. The very first word is the adjective compulsory. 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 The adjective compulsory. When something is compulsory, you have to do it or it must be done because of the laws, because of the regulations. The regulations dictate that it should be done or the regulations force you to do it. So the word compulsory. An example. Some university courses are compulsory. If you don't take them, you won't be able to graduate. Some university courses are compulsory. If you don't take them, you won't be able to graduate. Some university courses are compulsory. If you don't take them, you won't be able to graduate. Some university courses are compulsory. If you don't take them, you won't be able to graduate. Which means you have to take some university courses and uh, there's no way you can skip some university courses because if you don't take them, if you don't pass them, you won't be able to graduate. So there are some university courses that you have to take, that need to be taken, that must be completed, must be done, must be taken because of the university regulations or the university laws or the regulations and laws of the university force you to take those courses. So some university courses are compulsory and if you don't take them, you won't be able to graduate. All right, now let's move on to the next word that if you know, your English is wonderful, which is the adjective ubiquitous. The adjective ubiquitous. 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 Yeah, you heard me right. Ubiquitous. When something is ubiquitous, it is present everywhere. You can see it everywhere. It exists or is present everywhere. And as a result, you can see it everywhere. So ubiquitous. An example. Apple stores are ubiquitous these days. You can see them everywhere. Apple stores are ubiquitous these days. You can see them everywhere. Apple stores are ubiquitous these days. You can see them everywhere. Apple stores are ubiquitous these days. You can see them everywhere, which means you can see Apple stores everywhere. You know, they're present everywhere. They can be seen everywhere. They exist everywhere. And wherever you go, you can see them. There is one in every place you go or there is one wherever you go. So Apple stores are ubiquitous and you can see them everywhere. All right, now let's move on to the third word that if you know, your English is wonderful and amazing, which is the word detrimental, detrimental, the adjective detrimental, detrimental, detrimental. What is the meaning of detrimental? Detrimental is an adjective and it means harmful or dangerous. So when something is detrimental, it is harmful or it is dangerous. It causes or does harm to something. It causes damage to something. So the adjective Detrimental, detrimental, detrimental. An example. Smoking is very detrimental to our health. Smoking is very detrimental to our health. Smoking is very detrimental to our health, which means smoking is very harmful to our health. Smoking does a lot of harm and damage to our health, or smoking causes a lot of harm and damage to our health. So smoking is very detrimental to our health. All right, let's move on to the next English word that if you know your English is perfect and amazing, which is the word, the adjective nefarious, 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 nefarious. What is the meaning of nefarious? 
Something that is nefarious is criminal or evil. So when something is nefarious, when we describe something as being nefarious, what we mean is that it is criminal or evil. Let me provide you with an example. The government must make laws against nefarious activities like selling drugs. The government must make laws against nefarious activities like selling drugs. The government must make laws against nefarious activities like selling drugs. The government must make laws against nefarious activities like selling drugs, which means the government must legislate against selling drugs or the government must make laws against criminal and evil activities like selling drugs. The government must take action or legislate against criminal and evil activities like selling drugs. All right, now let's move on to the next English word that if you English students, if you language learners, English learners know, your English is wonderful, which is the word fraudulent, fraudulent, the adjective fraudulent, the adjective fraudulent, 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 the adjective fraudulent, fraudulent. When something is fraudulent, it is intended to deceive people in an illegal way with the purpose of gaining money, with the purpose of gaining power, with the purpose of taking advantage of people financially. So something that is fraudulent is intended to deceive people or is intended to deceive you in an illegal way to take advantage of you financially or gain money and power in the wrong way or in a dishonest way. So the adjective fraudulent, an example. Don't trust them, his behavior seems fraudulent. 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 Don't trust them, his behavior seems fraudulent which means don't trust them, he wants to deceive you or he's trying to deceive you or his behavior seems deceptive or he seems to be trying to deceive you to take advantage of your money and take advantage of you financially. So his behavior is fraudulent, don't trust him. All right, let's move on to the next English word that if you language learners, if you dear English learners know, your English is wonderful, which is the word the word residue, 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 the word residue. Residue is a noun and refers to the part of something that is left after the rest is taken or gone. So the part of something that is left after the rest is spent is allocated to something else or is gone or taken. Residue, residue, an example. He has agreed to pay off the residue of the finance after four months. He has agreed to pay off the residue of the finance after four months. He has agreed to pay off the residue of the finance after four months. Which means he has agreed to pay off the rest of the finance that is left after the other part is taken or is spent on something else in four months. So he has agreed to pay off the residue of the finance after four months. All right, let's move on to the next English word, which is ambidextrous, 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 ambidextrous. This adjective sounds a little bit confusing and is a bit of a mouthful. I mean, does not trip off the tongue, right? You're not able to pronounce it easily or you have difficulty pronouncing it, right? Ambidextrous, ambidextrous ambidextrous. What is the meaning of ambidextrous? When someone is ambidextrous, they're both left-handed and right-handed and they're able to use their both hands. They're capable of using their both hands. They can write with both hands. They can do things with both hands. So when someone is described as being ambidextrous, they're both left-handed and right-handed and they can use both of their hands. Ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. An example. I'm the only ambidextrous student of our class as I can use my both hands. I'm the only ambidextrous student of our class as I can use my both hands. 
I'm the only ambidextrous student of our class as I can use both hands. I'm the only ambidextrous student of our class as I can use both hands. I'm the only ambidextrous student of our class as I can use both hands. Which means I'm the only student of our class that can use both of his hands and can write or do things with both hands. I'm both left-handed and right-handed. So I'm the one and only student of our class that can use his both hands. All right, let's move on to the next English word that if you guys, if you lovely language learners, English learners know, your English is wonderful, which is the word jeopardize. Jeopardize, the verb jeopardize. Jeopardize is a verb. I'm saying the verb jeopardize. Jeopardize, jeopardize, jeopardize. But what does it mean? Jeopardize means to put something in danger, to endanger something or to put something in danger of something else, to put something at risk of something else. So, to jeopardize something means to endanger something or to put something in danger. An example, your irresponsible behavior is likely to jeopardize the future of our company. Your irresponsible behavior is likely to jeopardize the future of our company. Your Irresponsible behavior is likely to jeopardize the future of our company. Your irresponsible behavior is likely to jeopardize the future of our company. Your irresponsible behavior is likely to jeopardize the future of our company, which means your irresponsible and insensible behavior is likely to put the future of our company in danger. All right, guys, now let's move on to the next English word that if you know your English is wonderful, which is the adjective dire. The adjective dire, dire, dire. The adjective dire, dire. What does it mean? When something is dire, it is serious and terrible. So, when something is dire, it is serious and terrible. An example. If you don't take your health problems seriously, you will have to face the dire consequences. If you don't take your health problems seriously, you will have to face the dire consequences. If you don't take your health problems seriously, you will have to face the dire consequences. Which means if you do not take your health problems and issues seriously now, if you don't care about them now, then you will have to face the serious and terrible consequences later on. Do you want to do it? Of course you don't. So take your health problems seriously now, not later, now. All right, guys, now let's move on to the next English word that if you know your English is terrific, which is the word, the word oscillate, oscillate. Oscillate is a verb. So keep in mind that this word is a verb. Oscillate is a verb. And when we say something oscillates, it means something keeps fluctuating or changing between two extreme amounts, between the lowest amount and the highest amount. So when something oscillates, it keeps fluctuating or changing between two extreme amounts, between the lowest and the highest amount. So the verb oscillate, oscillate, Oscillate. An example. The inflation rate has been oscillating between 10 and 15 percent over the past 10 months. The inflation rate has been oscillating between 10 and 15 percent over the past 10 months. The inflation rate has been oscillating between 10 and 15 percent over the past 10 months. The inflation rate has been oscillating between 10 and 15 percent over the past 10 months. The inflation rate has been oscillating between 10 and 15 percent over the past 10 months, which means the inflation rate has been fluctuating and has kept changing between 10 and 15 percent over the past 10 months. All right, guys, that's about all. So in today's video, you learned 10 English words that if you know your English is wonderful, fantastic, and terrific. Let's review them together. All right, the first one was compulsory. The other one was ubiquitous. The other word was detrimental, detrimental. The other word was fraudulent, fraudulent. 
And the other was residue, residue. The sixth word was ambidextrous, ambidextrous. The seventh word was jeopardize. The eighth word was dire. The ninth word was oscillate, oscillate. And the tenth word was nefarious, nefarious, nefarious. All right, guys, now what I want you to do is subscribe to your YouTube channel, to your platform to take your English to the next level. And like this video if you enjoyed watching it, which you absolutely did. And leave a comment down below. I'll be back soon with another better video.